Hi, in this slide uh, I want to talk about um, mapping a lot of scenarios involving psychological flow. So you can see the term up here, which was coined by this chap here, who is, is a professor there in Chicago, and you can he's in Wikipedia and so forth. Um, and I think that when we look at the slide down here on the skill level, let's assume that right here from zero to one or two, I don't really have any self-concept of myself as being good at a certain skill. I mean, yeah, I can do it and, you know, it doesn't matter one way or the other. But maybe from two to five, uh, it's kind of who I am. You know, I, I, I do this, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of good. I mean, in fact, most people are five, think they're eights or nines because they don't really know how many, how how many levels of the game there really are. We just don't know. We don't know. When we were five, we really think we're, you know, an eight. I mean, you know, ninety percent of parents think they're in the top decile, L Lake Wobegon effect. Um, when we're out here and we're certifiably a experts and we even know it, actually we're not into the status of it. We're just you know doing it because you know we love being on the path. So that's three different distinct perspectives along this continuum. As far as challenge, this is just kind of, you know, uh, turn the crank. Uh, this is, uh, hey, this matters, but this up here is, you know, high stakes, you know, like this is uh, going to make or break us as far as making uh, money this month or something like that. So uh, again, different stations. So this then, when we put these together, it gives us some different uh, sort of sentimental scenarios. Uh, in this particular map, in the middle is the mean level of challenge and skill. And so if we um, are, you know, just kind of a hacker at doing something, so we don't have a, anything invested and I'm good at this at all, uh, and the challenge is zero to five, we, we really don't kind of care because, you know, we don't care. I mean, we're not, this isn't who we are. Whereas if our skill set's, you know, better, and we're in a low challenge, then we're bored. It's like, you know what? I'm above this. I'm beyond this. This is beneath me. This is, you know, I, I'm whatever. Notice, though, that at a low challenge level, when we get out to expert level, it's relaxation. And what's going on here is it's not, uh, you know, I'm not bored because this is beneath me. It's uh, uh, because I'm so good at this, I can do it without thinking about it, and I can actually multitask. So while I'm doing this, I can do something else, like teach. So if I was teaching um, tennis, for example, and, and you know, I, I can get any ball anywhere and hit it back just perfectly for the, for the student um, and, and chat while I'm doing it, uh, I actually can find it kind of relaxing and satisfying from a teaching viewpoint because I'm really I'm, I'm focused on doing something else. Um, going up the, the challenge ladder, if I'm, if I'm not very good at it, I really don't care. But if somebody is saying, hey, quick, you know, take care of this really big, important, hairy idea, I'm way, way over my head. So I'm just, I'm scared. I'm worried. I, I, don't, I'm, I don't have any anxiety because I don't, I, I don't even pretend that I can do it. Whereas if I think I'm really good and the challenge gets too great, this blows my cover, and now I'm anxious that that my my you know true self is going to be found out. So I, a little bit of uh, pride and and false sense of uh, cap capability prevent, prevents this. Now, I think what's really the most interesting story out are these 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 uh, uh, three things out here, because uh, it, it, to use a, a concept I, I've used in. Uh, competitive racket sports, tennis and squash specifically, uh, I call it the law of the ladder. If I can find somebody that I'm dead even with and we're out there playing away, uh, that's my chance for, for reaching flow in a competitive environment. If I go and I play somebody who's 10, 15 percent better than I, I mean, I'm in it. I'm not getting frustrated, you know, but uh, I'm being stretched and I'm, I'm, they're exposing th where I'm a little slow or I'm a little lax or, you know, I was not quite precise and they punished me for it. But after I've played with them, if I then do some individual practicing and then I go back and play with somebody who's beneath me by 10, 15 percent, that allows me to play and to consciously focus on one or two little wrinkles of the game. So that when I incorporate those, when I go back and play against my, my historic equal, I start to play a little bit better than them, better than them, and actually then I move up the ladder and I have to find this, this person might become my new sparring partner, my equal, and I find somebody else to stretch for. So 
that shows that you know we can't we can't go play with somebody way overhead because we just we're out of the the game. It's just too frustrating. We want to play with somebody who's pathetic because we can't practice you know what we want to do. So those are some different examples of getting more fluent and flexible and creative with the idea of psychological flow and designing that into not only our own learning experiments but our children you know, or our, our followers. So if I'm going to teach a, a little kid, you know, how to do something, we're going to figure out how to make it so simple, uh, so close in and so forth that, that they're on the hook. And, uh, and then we can, when it starts to be a little bit more boring, then we can say, okay, let's, let's, you know, crank up the level a little bit. And we move out on a 45 degree angle towards uh, 10, 10 on this chart. Thank you.